Hi everybody, uh, my name's Chris, uh, Chris Murphy. I'm one of the owners and directors here at Kitchen Warehouse. Um, we're glad you could join us um, again today. My previous background was a chef, so I've had a lot of experience over the years using uh, knives. And um, one of the, uh, the most frequently asked questions in our stores are basically how to maintain our knives, how to keep them sharp because they, they never seem to be quite as good as the day that they leave, uh, leave the shop. Well, it's actually not that hard and you just need to have a few basic tools that we'll go through today and that will uh, allow you to have professional quality sharp knives all, all the time at home. So um, essentially what, if we go back right back to the beginning, once you've bought yourself your, your knife and hopefully you've got yourself a good quality knife, um, now it could be a, a strip knife, which is a good quality Victorinox knife. Now this one's classed as a strip knife. A strip knife means that this is cut from one big sheet of metal, a machine punches it down, makes it into the shape of the, of the knife, it gets a plastic mold or handle on it, and then um, that's good, good to go once it's been sharpened. Victorinox made in Switzerland, they're one of the most popular brands at an entry level, particularly for chefs. These, um, these knives will last for years and years and years. And that's why uh, chefs all around the world will, uh, will gravitate towards these, towards these knives. I've still got mine 35 years probably on and they're still, uh, still great to use. And they're really nice and light as well. The good thing about these knives and they keep an edge extremely well. Um, so if we go for a strip knife, then the next, the next kind of level or the, the more expensive level is the forge knife. And we're going to go through uh, some sharpening techniques with a, particularly with a forge knife. This is a Yaxel branded knife, um, exclusive to Kitchen Warehouse um, in Australia. And this one here um, originates out of Japan. Um, it's 101 layers. Um, it's called Gao when in Japan, that means super and this really is super sharp. This is probably the next level up. Um, maybe a chef will aspire once he's um, gone through his apprenticeship, gravitate towards a good quality knife and one that they will look after. So speaking of looking after your knives, really important, we have some basic tools. We either have a, um, a plastic board. Um, these come in various colors. This is our own brand Kitchen Pro. Um, you can have a different color for, for whatever you may be using it on, maybe one for meat, one for fish, one for vegetables, etc. But a good quality board, either plastic, generally alternative would be wood. Um, if possible, try to stay clear from glass and particularly stay clear from using your bench top, whether it be stainless steel or some kind of porcelain tile. After you've got yourself your knife and you've got yourself your board, you need to have a sharpening tool. This can be either a steel, uh, this is a diamond steel. It can be a pull through sharpener. So this quite simply works through where you pull your knife through, either on a ceramic stone or a metal one. And this maintains the edge on your knife. Now, each one of these devices, however you use it, it's really recommended that you use this every time you use your knife. So if you use this knife every day, you should be using your steel every day. So um, steels can be quite complicated uh, for people to learn how to use. Um, the technique of pulling it through is quite difficult. Always pull away from your body, never towards your body, because you're likely to cut, cut yourself as a lot greater. That's quite, quite hard to, uh, to learn. So just simply put it on a, on a flat surface, on a tea towel, and just pull through. And it's as simple as that. You cannot do any damage to your knife by pulling it through. So a nice quality diamond steel, either um, or a uh, pull through sharpener, but these must be used regular. It's no good um, pulling this out of the drawer every week or two weeks, three weeks, trying to get the edge back on your knife. These won't put the edge back on, they'll maintain it. They'll keep the edge, they'll keep it sharp, but they won't put it back on. So once it's gone, it generally has to be professionally sharpened. 
Well, you can professionally sharpen it at home with another uh, couple of simple tools. You can either have it done on a, on a whetstone, something like this. So this has been soaking in water for 20 minutes. We pop that on some kind of uh, device, whether it be on a, we've got it set up on a board here. You could set it up on tea towel, but you might need to double your tea towel over a few times, just so you've got height, so you can actually get your fingers underneath the side. Um, so that's, the, that's one alternative. If you have them professionally done in store, in WA, all our stores offer uh, knife sharpening. That's usually done on a sand belt. The difference with a sand belt, in my opinion, because it's an electric motor, you've got less control when you're sharpening them. It's done by a professional, but still, you're taking more off the, off the knife because this is a, um, a sand, sander that's rotating extremely fast. If you use a stone, you need to go on there kind of all day to, to the damage that you can do on a sander in, in five minutes. If you drop this knife and take the tip off, then it's a sand belt that re-puts the, the, the edge back on it and puts the point back on it. So you can imagine how much, how, how, how much metal it's actually taking away, as opposed to trying to do that on a stone. It's gonna take you probably days to re-put put a point on. Um, so we have um, a s couple of stones here. You can get them, the basic one, 300 to 1,000. So one's coarse, one's fine. And that will give you a kind of a good start on a, um, on a knife. So if it's really blunt, the coarse side first, and it's just simply pulling it through like that. That's, that's really how easy it is. Now, I suppose the, the things that you need to learn is these, these knives are all professionally sharpened at a particular angle. Now, um, this is a Yaxel. So this is roughly around about 14 degrees. So the, the edges are sharpened here around about 14, 14 degrees. So how do you get to 14 degrees? Well, you would know that that is 90. So you could assume that that is 45. Halfway again, around about 22. Halfway again would be kind of your 11 and just come up a little bit. So you, you're just lifting it up a little bit. Now that's, that's really guessing. And if you're guessing every time, you could be trying to put a different angle on this blade every time you go to sharpen it. So that's not really what the purpose of, of the stone is. We want you to have consistent angle so that you're consistently sharpening it at that same angle as opposed to re-putting an edge on there every time. So what we can, uh, what you can use as a, as a, for assistance is a guide. These simply slip over the back of the knife and that sets the, the angle and the blade correctly onto the stone. And we'll do that maybe 20 times on one side, 20 times on another. And you can, you can hear it. It's actually kind of grating. And if I turn that over to the fine side, much different sound. Still sharpening, but a lot finer. Now this, as I said, was a thousand. We've got them that go up to 8,000. So typically um, Japanese chefs may have 8,000 uh, coarseness and they'll use those on, on a sushi or sashimi knife um, and take a lot of pride and a lot of care in, in that knife. And they're just really wanting to get it so fine and so sharp. When they cut through a piece of fish, it's one motion and it's absolutely giving the utmost respect to the fish, particularly if it's a kind of a tuna that they've spent um, thousands of dollars per kilo on. So the coarser ones, probably not for the everyday customer, but the ones here, which we've got um, 300 to 1,000 are perfect. So as I said, this has been soaking for 20, minutes or so. Once you put this in the water, 
you'll see that there's a lot of air bubbles start to, to form and to come out of, the, out of the stone. And that's because it's dried out and it needs to refill kind of with, with moisture. So let's um, just give you a little bit of background on, on specifically the Yaxel knife. So Yaxel um, are made in, uh, in Japan in a, um, a city called Seki and they've been making uh, knives uh, for, or swords initially for 700 years. And um, they, um, in 18, uh, 1876, there was a new law came out in Japan and it basically abolished the carrying of a sword. So you can imagine what that did to sales. Sales dropped dramatically, had to reinvent themselves and over a number of years went into the manufacture of knives, different styles of knives, smaller hunting knives and all of that kind of thing, and then into chef's knives. And um, this chef knife here um, in 1932 was when they started production, particularly of, of chef's cook's knives. And in 1992, the business became um, Yaxel as we know it today. So as I said, this knife here has got 101 layers. This is one of their better quality ones. It's called Gao, which means super. And it's got 50, 50 layers on one side, 50 layers on the other side. And straight down the middle, it's got a material called carbide, which is essentially carbon steel. Now carbon steel is what actually makes the knife sharp. So if we went back a few years, this was my first, one of my first knives. This is a carbon, a carbon knife, and you can see it's actually been cleaned up quite well, but it's a little bit ugly in looking, but that's um, how it would look. It would look that kind of dusty gray, and that would go almost the color of this handle over periods of time, unless it was cleaned. So those carbon elements are now being put into the, into the blade, but kind of hidden with stainless steel. But occasionally, what you might see if you don't dry or, you, or look after your knives correctly, you might see little rust spots that appear, odd blades. And all that is is the carbon element that's inside, the ingredients that are inside this metal, and that's the little part that's rusting. It's not really the knife, a little scrub and it's, and it's gone. Um, so that was just a little bit of background on, uh, on Yaxel. Um, interesting that these, uh, these kind of brands that we kind of see every day have been around almost for 700 years in one form or another. So going back to the sharpening technique again, so we'll assume that this was a, a blunt knife. We'll, sl we'll either slide on a guide or we'll do a manual sharpen, so about 20 times on each side. No pressure, firm grip on the handle, and hardly any pressure. What I'm trying to do is keep all of the knife so it actually makes contact with the stone, either on the back or the fourth. Turn it over, and we do the same again. A nice firm grip, because this will get sharp and you don't want it slipping, but I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the knife itself, on the blade. So we've done that about 20 times on each side and we'll turn it over and we'll do the same on this side. And you can hear it's kind of grating away there. There's little bits of particles that are coming off and that's what actually helps to sharpen the knife. That's what you, what you need on your stone. You don't need to scoop water to get it nice and clean. You actually need this build up to assist in the sharpening process. Turn that one over. We'll just wipe it, wipe it clean. And then we just typically finish it off on a steel just to get rid of any burr, there'll be a little bit of buildup of burr. 
And then that should allow us to do a paper test. This is really just to see if that knife's sharp. And I think you can quite comfortably say that we've done a pretty good job. That knife's now nice and sharp and it makes so much difference. So much difference when you pick up your knife and you just grab your item, the piece of fruit, and it just slices through like it's going through butter. And you, believe it or not, cut yourself less or not quite as bad with a sharp knife as you would with a blunt knife. Because with a blunt knife, of course, you're putting more pressure on and as soon as it breaks through the skin, it will go deeper. So, um, going back to the sharpening technique again. Can I just cut in for a second? Mm. I just wanted to know how people, people are going with volumes, volumes and things, things like that. We've come back on to Instagram, so um, I wouldn't mind just hearing from people. They can let us know whether they can hear. Obviously, um, with Facebook, let us know how the volume is. And um, as we said, we're testing the new cameras. Um, so just keep asking questions, and we'll get to those in later on in a little bit. So back to Chris. <laughs> So the sharpening technique, just to finish it off, on a steel, pulling it through. Again, this is as easy as you like, but that will just help to maintain the edge. If you don't, um, or don't want to use that, this is just a, um, a wet stone. So this has got water in. It's like a little, it's kind of a smaller version of that. Hey Chris, you need to go back on the other side so everyone this one? can see. So we just pull it through 10 times and then 10 times on the finer. These wheels do not put a lot of pressure on them, downward pressure, because they'll split, but you can get them replaced. Um, but that will work just as a kind of a top up, as would the, the diamond steel. And that maintains the edge. There's a lot to be said about regularly using these steels. You've got to get into that habit of every day, just giving it a little sharp, just a little bit of a touch every day. And then every so often, every kind of couple of months, depending on how often you use your knife, then you'll go onto a stone. Now the steels here, this is a diamond steel. This is a flat steel as opposed to a round one. The good thing about a flat one, they've got one little secret that they can, they can help you with. They help you sharpening a serrated bread knife. So when you sharpen that bread knife, you kind of just really sharpening those tops of those teeth. But if you hold that upright, you can actually get down in between each little groove and then turn it over. Now it's a little bit time consuming, but that will make this bread knife this serrated edge knife, a little bit sharper, and that's how you do it. it but it must be done on a, flat, on a flat steel. If you try to do it on a round steel, you won't be able to get inside those little serrations. So that's a, just a little, little trick for you. Um, so the, the steel, you can pick up one of these in store for about $70. Um, pull through sharpeners, range or start from I think about $39.95. Uh, these uh, wet stones, depending on what you, which one you purchase. Um, this one comes with two guides. Uh, one for a larger knife above 15 centimeters, one for a shorter small knife. Um, they slip on quite comfortably. Comes in a, a little box that's got little rubber feet and that can be used on its own on top of a, um, a work surface. Um, and these are a, kind of around that $139. Um, but this will save you a fortune. If you are having to get all your knives sharpened once a year, professionally in store, I think we charge $15 per knife. So it soon adds up and you've already paid for one, one block of knives, we'll pay for, pay for it with one, one of those stones. Do we have any uh, questions or anything that's... Um... Someone, oops, hang on. 
Just wait for the microphone. Yep. Cool. So um, someone was asking about um, would you ever wash your knives in a dishwasher and why you would or wouldn't? Um, well, that lady or gentleman, if they would put their best clothes in their spin dryer, they're probably likely to get the same result, something that doesn't fit them anymore. So you, you get out what you put in. If you look after a good quality knife, not in a dishwasher, not even in really hot scalding water, hot soapy water, that's all you need and needs to be dried immediately. It's not one of those things that you can spend three or four hundred dollars on an individual good quality knife, give it little respect, leave it on the bench top to dry or dirty, and put it in the dishwasher. A dishwasher is an extreme temperature, you know, it's in there. Does, it, does that knife really need one hour, 35 minutes to clean it? I don't think so. You know, it's got um, a, a very abrasive inside there and very hot. So the answer to that would be hot soapy water and dry immediately and put back into your knife block or where it's been uh, stored. Then it will uh, help to protect anybody from getting cut. Cool. I don't know if there's any more questions. Any more questions? <laughs> Um, did, you, did you tell people, are we on a microphone here? Yep, cool. Did you tell people about what kind of boards? I know you mentioned, why would you, what, which, what's your preference and which ones would you use? Um, glass boards, what, what are your thoughts on so glass? If, if you can stay clear of glass, I don't think it's a very good uh, surface to be, all it's gonna do is, because it's so hard, there's no giving it. There's giving this, when you put pressure on, there's a little bit of give. There's a little bit of give on plastic. There's very little give on glass. So it's essentially just going to blunt your knife a lot quicker. Um, so glasses, uh, you know, it's just very, very harsh. So a nice, a nice wooden board, alternatively, um, a nice plastic one, much better for your knives. Great. And do we sell, um, do we sell the sharpeners, uh, the guides by themselves? I think you mentioned yes. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. We've got, um, they come in a pack of two for two different sizes of knife and they um, are, I think they're $19.95 um, off the top of my head. If you buy the set, as I said, it comes with two guides, one stone and a little box um, and you're ready to go um, just with a little bit of uh, practice. And the good thing about this is, you know, once you get a little bit comfortable with this, you know, potentially you can do your friends, do your friends knives get them to bring your bottle of wine around, um, charge them out, you know, make a fun, fun nine of it. Um, perhaps not at the moment, but uh, when things get back to normal, that's a little, um, a little two piece set. Um, and those are suitable for most Japanese knives between 10 and 15 degrees um, sharpening angle. And I have it on good authority that they're $15. 15. Even better. $15 is a giveaway. Um, do you, what do you think about electric sharpeners? How do you feel about those? Yeah, I'm always, always a, look, electric sharpeners are always a little bit, to me, like you lose control. You, you, it's kind of anything that's got a motor driven, it's, it's going at a high revolution. Having said that, we do sell them and they do a good job. But you've just got to be mindful. It's, it's one of those things that you've got to, uh, don't go into it really, really fast and furious because you'll start taking lots off your blade quite quickly. As I said with a stone, you would have to take, spend like days and days and days just doing backwards and forwards to actually sh reshape edges. So um, there's a lot of people, um, Alexander's in Germany and um, people are commenting on your fabulous instruction. Do you think we could get you to show them a couple of little knife skills, like just to show um, the onion. Sure. I'll just come in here and move these out of the way and we'll just test our close-ups as well while we're, we're doing these testings on the camera. So uh, we just got a, a, a typical uh, red onion here. Um, I'm sure everybody's aware how to, um, how to cut one of these. So the, the aim when you, once you've peeled an onion, is to kind of leave some of the core there. You can see that little core 
what that core does that holds the onion together. So you don't start cutting the onion on the core side, always on the opposite side. So that is basically keeping it bound together. So we're just going to go down. And then we're going to make two cross-cut incisions, nice and carefully. And that's still keeping it together. And that gives you beautiful, finely chopped onion. The core there you probably wouldn't use. And then just chop that little end piece up. And that is kind of finely chopped onions that if you were in a, a good restaurant, that's the kind of quality you would have to prepare for a chef. All the same size, roughly, nice and fine, as opposed to um, big pieces that are not, uh, not suitable for, uh, for specifically for some of the dishes. But you can see how sharp that knife was. Just go through a tomato again. You wouldn't believe how much pressure I'm not putting on that knife. It's just literally like butter. This is um, used by um, one of the most famous chefs in the world. He's got, um, he's a two star, two star chef. So I think there's only two chefs in the world that have got three hats. He's got, um, he's got two. Um, and he is not necessarily an ambassador for, for Yaxel, but it's his favourite uh, knife of choice. Um, so, so it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's kind, kind of, of a little bit, bit of, a, of a, an unsung hero, and we're very fortunate to be able to sell it at a Kitchen Warehouse. Um, so we have a few more questions now. Leanne on Facebook is asking, uh, she has Shun Premier knives, yeah. and when you're right at that high end... Yep, yeah, which is... This is a shun, another beautiful knife. Um, what would you recommend as far as sharpening goes on those really premium quality knives that we sell? Yeah, well, all the Japanese knives are predominantly uh, need sharpening at the at the same angle. Um, so a um, a shun is uh, sixteen degrees, so it's slightly slightly less, a fourteen degree on the Yaxel, sixteen degrees. On this one, the Rockwell testing on this one is uh, 61, and on the Yaxol 58. Rockwell's a test that's done by when the knife's been manufactured, ready for a kind of sharpening. It's done by a fine diamond, and it's punched into the, the side of the blade, and that gives it a test of how hard it is. The harder it is on the, on the scale, then the sharper you'll be able to get that, that knife. So, um, as I said, the Shun and um, the Shun and Yaxel, very, very similar. And a lot of chefs um, will, will, uh, will have Shun. Um, what would you recommend as a set? Like, um, what do you think are the must-haves in your kitchen as far as if you're going to buy a kitchen set? Well, um, you know, most, most knife blocks are um, nine and ten piece. It's a lot, of, a lot of knives. You can only ever use one at a time. Um, but they are, um, it's handy to have a serrated bread knife, handy to have obviously a cook's knife, a small uh, vegetable uh, knife for the smaller items. Um, often you'll get scissors which are, which are really good. Um, it'll probably come with a steel, uh, generally a carving knife and a, and a shorter utility knife. But as far as, um, you know, my blocks are, block at home uh, we get a lot of samples sent and it's actually quite a big block it's probably got 20 20 knives in it let's say of which 15 are likely to be cook's knives um, <laughs> but i will always go for generally go for the same knife 